I'm excited. What was our other partner's name again? Gage. Well, thanks for coming again. I think instead of uh, or due to the superposition of feelings towards your presentation, you're still in the class. Um, I want to take it as a credit that you like the class, but maybe it's just because it is a requirement. <laughs> so, who we are and what are we doing? It's the um, right question to ask after... Well, I, I've heard this, this thing two times. First, in uh, the course of economics and, and business, in my undergraduate, which, okay, holds the goals. And second, there is natural thoughts of a person after a hangover. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> but um, it's the third time when, when you can uh, practice it is hearing in the class. I think you don't find it. <laughs> So, um, we are in the physical chemistry class, and we all impatiently wait until we can predict outcome of uh, measurements in some experiments, like spectra and MR activation barriers, and we are suffering boring mathematical exercises for a long time, and we will uh, to continue for, for the most of the class. So in, in this mathematical exercises, what is a connection to physical chemistry and what is our tactical goals? How do we wrap up what we are doing? So we are working on stability and processes in molecules, which cannot be described without electrons, which have some wave nature. And we need equations that describe what electrons are doing, and second, ways to solve them. Right? Since electrons are so vivid that they do not stay still most of the time, we are not happy with just static uh, equations and solutions. We need to look into the time development. And in the oversimplified language, we can tell that our goal is to predict future. Predict future in the sense of electrons. So by now, we do, well, of course, you are certified experts in many things including postulates of quantum mechanics, but in the regular narration of the course, we do have two ways to predict the future of electrons. First, by... What? The evolution operator. Yes, wave function <laughs> evolution operator. And second is by uh, infinitesimal increments, propagating forward in time, which works well for numerical model. And now we are looking to conclude the third method to predict future, which is most practical, most powerful, and uh, we will practice it at least five times during the course. Five times is not like solving problem of 10 minutes, it's five big times. Um, so the third method will be based on separation of variables and solving Schrodinger equation in a standard way how people solve differential equations. Um, one separates variables, one finds general solutions, and then one constructs partial solution as superposition of, of, of general solutions, linear combination, something like this. And we will go through this way which some of you may experience in differential equations. Or if you didn't do this course, we will cover the basic sufficient for our course. And by the end of today's meeting, I will ask for your opinion. Would you prefer white background or black background? So it is a place where we stopped last time, right? And after presenting on the 
uh, postulate of quantum mechanics, nothing in this uh, long list looks like a uh, surprise. So this is an equation that you want to solve. Okay. So you want to know wave function of an electron at each space at any time. And it can be reduced to a time independent equation that gives set of eigen values and eigen functions that are proper value, eigen values of this uh, energy operator. If you want to name. What else? Good solutions of such equations should match so called orthogonality condition. And then we want to use this information as a building blocks to solve this equation. Okay? And I promise that by the end of today's meeting we will have. So, in some sense, it is our last pure methodological meeting. From, um, from next meeting, we will go into applications. They will be very ridiculous. Inapplicable to, to real life, or very, very applicable. I can disclose the secret. We will consider a universe consist consisting of one electron for like four meetings. Mm -hmm. But uh, otherwise, it will be only fairy tales without any practical, you, you will not develop skills to do anything useful for your career. So you better go slowly by sure. What's special about energy based on your experience in the class? Just give any any ideas. So, and and you can do tricks and know about my interests, profile, and, and focus. If we are looking on time evolution, and we spend so much time about phase accumulation and uh, action in the exponential. So, in this aspect, why do we need energy? What is useful? in knowing energy of uh, quantum states of the system. Mm, yes. I mean, it helps us like make predictions of what is going on with the electron. It gives us some kind of like quantifiable data of mm -hmm. where it could be or what its movements are like. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is correct, but very general. Let me let me start going into more specific. So when we were going from time dependent to time independent Schrodinger equation, we guessed the solution in the form of function that depends on x times we were calling this thing a constant, but through some tricks we immediately discovered that the energy of an electron it is what helps it to evolve in time, to accumulate phase. So as time passes by, electron getting more and more phase. Okay? So the energy is good because energy of orbitals, energy of, of uh, quantum states, not the total energy of system. Energy of states is good because we learn more about states, and uh, if it is molecular orbitals, we can know something about electronic properties in static case. But in the perspective to time development, each energy is a key factor for accumulating phase. So if you look into predicting future, we need energy. What is special about energy is that it sets up time evolution. Evolution and phase accumulation.
in some in very narrow sense this is already prediction of the future and solution of time d dependent choosing equation right you have product of space part time part and here we can put this is correct but very boring I know everything in the course is boring, but it is special boring because it is trivial. It doesn't tell us anything, so nothing changes uh, in, in fact. So it's just a factor to this function. And it is prediction of the future, but very boring future when the uh, when the past and future do not change much. When the here I'm going to lie. But in the frames of this course, it is correct state. But generally, it is a big layer of quantum mechanics. A state in the, if system is prepared in the eigenstate, it will stay there forever. So if we are in the eigenstate, this phase evolution will not break this eigenstate. System will stay there. No measurements, no any collisions. Therefore, it is born. You are allowed to yell down. Because it is born. But we want to look onto non-boring situations. And before we look on this, let's focus on the requirement of orthogonality in the properties of eigenstates, eigen, uh, eigen functions of independent choosing equation. Give me, please give me a sign if the word orthogonality makes you happy. Okay, okay, I, I saw something. Give me signs if the word orthogonality makes you very unhappy or a little bit unhappy. So give me signs if you hear it for the first time. Okay, good. So We are not mathematicians, therefore we try to minimize the amount of mass to minimal level, but we cannot do without it. So this all eigenfunctions of Schrodinger equation should satisfy this equation. If you multiply a function by itself and integrate, it should give either 1 or 0. Depending on if you multiply it by itself or function with different number. What is it? What is it? How, to, how to understand it from... Common sense. Let's draw a simple function which will be just one everywhere. X to function one equal function one equals one. Now function two. equals x. <coughs> and now let's our infinity will be equal to L capital. So suppose that we, we do this operation f2 f1 dx into L. What are we going to get? So Give me answer by fingers. Uh, one more try. One more try. Okay, one one out of uh, fourteen was correct. So uh, when you multiply one by x, you get x, right? And you integrate on the equal amount of. Uh, equal range from negative and positive, right? So you measure, the integration is measured under the, under the curve. If you measure area of this triangle with sine minus and area of this triangle with sine plus. So we, they are of the same height, same base, but different signs and add them together. What will be the answer? 
Yes. Good. So you now you, you hopefully get a feeling of orthogonality. So such functions multiplying each other, multiplying them together, you and integrating, you get zero. And there is also normalization, but it's too boring. We will do it later. Anyone is not happy with orthogonality property now? Okay. Suppose that we are happy. We need it because we will use it through the rest of our meeting. And this is not true time of the beginning. Probably we started about five minutes later. So I should be very careful this time. What does it mean, past? In sense of our course. Yeah, you can say it negative or time equals zero, but what does it mean past in relation to wave function? Can we say that past will always consist of eigenstate of, of the system? No, past can consist of eigenstate of eigensystem, but one eigenstate, another eigenstate, or superposition of them. So we need to introduce a methodology, an approach that will accept any past, any initial condition, any general situation. So if you project from past to the future, we should, we should not restrict ourselves to specific cases of past. So any past, any shape, any type of function that we accept as our initial condition at time zero or time minus infinity, whatever you prefer, should work. So this is main idea and the rest will be just boring now. Let's <coughs> see. We kind of get through, through here. So the solution of time dependent is solution of time independent times phase accumulation, right? And we do get functions and energies. But our goal is to use all what all the ground that we got in order to find evolution in time, the propagation, the change in time of any wave function. So for this uh, initial wave function Psi, we understand that it doesn't need to coincide with any of the eigenfunctions. So there should be no restrictions except that it should be normalized, it should be good function in mathematical sense. Like it shouldn't have too much of singularities or spikes or discontinuities, but in, uh, it should be a very broad range of functions. Anything that can relate to initial condition of an electron. Like electron spread over around a nuclei. Or electron spread over molecule. Or electron running from one wall to another wall of a tiny nano material. Something like this. General. Help me. What should we do if we solve the differential equation and want to find particular solution matching given initial condition? So the key idea, superposition, means we are going to represent our evolution not by one term like this, but adding together terms like this for all eigenstates. So I'm going to place a summation sign 
some somewhere in this uh, slide. Where should I put it? Okay. Or I can put it here and put some indices. We are done. Just kidding. <laughs> we need to do a little bit more. So if if I blind with it's not just blind with it's worse or what. If I do a silly thing and just put summation sign, it will not work. Because if I just add them together, it means each of the eigenstates will contribute equally to the solution. But it is too, too wild approximation. Then if our initial condition, for example, consists only of one eigenstate and not others, then we should skip them from the summation. So we need to have some weights coefficients. So we need to allow each of eigenstate contribute to solution at different measure, with different expansion coefficients, with different weights. If you can reformulate this statement in your own uh, words, you may write it down. So eigenstates contribute to solution of time dimensional equation with each of them contributes with its own weight. And our goal is to find connection between this weight, which you can put C, K, capital. And our goal is to find connection between this weight coefficients and the initial condition. Fine connection of weight coefficients C sub K and initial condition psi x comma time equals zero. We are very close to the answer. And some of you are aware of the of the answer. I just offer very slow steps to see the logic because it is one of the what we get by the end of today's class will be our main tool for the rest of the course of course we will use it again and again and it, it would be nice to to have the best possible understanding so do not be scared it's not too many symbols through the course, you will have much more busy slides. Uh, if, it, if it makes you picture. Um, so, I haven't made anything. I just reformulated what we had on, on the previous slide. So, our solution, general, our solution for a general, particular solution for specific initial condition is constructed as a superposition of space-time, time evolution, which are specific for each eigen state, and, and this weight coefficients, or we can call them expansion coefficients, or I don't care how you call them. That's the answer. But it's not the whole story, because we do not know the values of these expansion coefficients. Even if you do know the solutions, if you know eigenstates and uh, eigen energies, we do not know these expansion coefficients, and we need to find them. We need well, we are, we, we are not. Um, you can immediately object me and tell, no, you are wrong. We cannot find any expansion coefficients because we are not solving any specific problem, right? Um, once a friend of mine was uh, doing a practice teaching in the middle school, science for middle school, and was um, administering a lab with, it was not a lab, it was just a little like, short exam, quiz. 
and the assignment was suppose it was very very introductory science with density or whatever. Suppose you have a wooden brick of this length, height, find the density. And everyone in class starts writing, and one person was sitting and doing nothing. He was coming. Why are you doing nothing? I'm supposed to get a brick. So, uh, like, where, where, is, um, where is the brick? It is written. So, you can make the same objection right now. That we are not solving a specific problem. How can we find expansion coefficients? Well, we need to establish a protocol, lab protocol. How to find this uh, expansion coefficients. And then we will be in a good standing. So we need to connect these expansion coefficients with what? With which conditions? We need to find connection uh, with initial what? <coughs> <laughs> okay, I, I think we got it. With initial conditions. How? What does it mean, initial conditions? What's that? Yes. You, uh, London? Yeah. You did, you, did, you did answer what are initial conditions for wave function. How did you? Can you repeat? The... You answered like it is wave function at negative time. Yeah. Or we can accept it wave function at time zero. Yeah. Right? Yeah, C plug in zero for the time. And... Yes. Out there. Correct. So here we take our functional form, our hypothesis of solution, and we plug in instead of time, we plug in zero. What has changed? What is the exponential of zero? Now you will answer one. Exponential of zero is one. No objections. Therefore, we get rid of this time dependence and we have on one side definition of initial state according to London. <laughs> so wave function at time zero, right? On the left. And on the right, you have same as we had before, but without time dependence. Summation with expansion coefficients and eigenfunction. What do we need? We need to find these coefficients and get rid of the functions. We need to do something to this expression to focus, to get answer for this C sub k. So which first practical thing we discussed at the beginning of the class? Orthogonality. Orthogonality. So orthogonality is something that will help us to Simplify this expression. Maybe not making it shorter, but make it more practical, useful. So we do have this psi x zero equals summation k c sub k. Phi sub k x. And we feel that ortho something, orthogonality will help. So why don't we do a little numerical experiment and multiply each term from each side from left and right by eigenfunction? This little star with different index. If here we had index k, here we put m, and we can put somewhere here dx. So it will be cooperation of integration. Integral dx phi star over m. Okay. 
What are your expectations? What should it give to us? Well, uh, some, some, of, some of you are smiling and I, I see that you, I see the answer in your eyes. But uh, who doesn't know answer and can just hypothesize, what does this expression promises us? Do you see any simplification? So let's, let's uh, look back, let's focus back on the orthogonality. <coughs> What is it? It's like um, basically itself. It's it's squaring function. So so wouldn't this come out to equal zero as well? Since orthogonality is a procedure mm -hmm. that converts complicated functions into simple numbers, zero, one, whatever. But uh, the main idea that Function is if, if you do Excel and you want to represent function numerically, you have so many numbers to show the, the, the line. And we have two functions. So the orthogonality is a procedure that takes two functions and converts them into one number. Mm -hmm. So there is a hope that if you take these two functions and consider them in a sense of orthogonality, you will get rid of them. And there will be no functions, only numbers. Numbers are always bad because they're simple. So we expect to get rid of functions. So it's our main expectation. Yeah. Nothing new. You saw it. Okay. Two star five k dx. What is it equal to? According to our agreement. One to k equals n zero on the west. Do you believe that here we are in class are so advanced intellectually that we are the first in the world to do it? Well, I wish, but unfortunately not. Um, do you have an idea about names of scientists who dealt with orthogonality in application to quantum theory? Griffiths refers to this thing as Foyer's trick. I don't know if he actually had anything to do with this. Huh? Uh, Griffiths talks about Foyer's trick, like this thing being Foyer's trick. Yeah. <clears throat> but some, just one name. Wilbur? No. Banach? Huh? Banach? No. Any, any names you uh, heard in connection with quantum theory? Einstein. Good, but no. <laughs> Rutherford? No. I know. Schrodinger? No. We're just yelling out names now. <laughs> <laughs> like random names here. Heisenberg? I don't know. No, but, but you, you're making the list shorter and shorter. <laughs> so, um... Oh, you're right. right. So... Right. <laughs> it's just too many names. What, what he uh, suggested... Well, he suggested many things. <laughs> but uh, why don't we replace this long and boring expression just by a symbol delta n k, which will be defined the same way. Just because sometimes we need to perform summation over this. And delta is more comfortable than the large bracket and two-store building. Okay, so direct delta. Which means it is just either zero or one, depending on how the indexes are behaving. Direct delta. That's the Kronecker delta, isn't it? Because Dirac's delta is the integral. Oh, I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. So it's not Dirac, it's Kronecker. Good. Extra credit. <laughs> so.
So I just swap the order so that the C sub K doesn't disturbs us from focusing on the source of another. From top to bottom, I just swapped the C goes to the front, and these two things go to here. And then we replace this box with just single delta and K. We are almost ready to, to give the answer and analyze it. But just before you tell me what these two symbols make to each other. If they meet, I, I'll tell you. <laughs> so this is a little hungry, angry snake. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little mouse. And this is a little rabbit with oh. ears. So the snake eats rabbit. <laughs> So if the summation sign meets delta sign, nothing is left. They just cancel each other. Okay, now a little bit more scientifically, same, same idea. So here is our snake, here is our ring. So this delta function, which it means like either zero or one. So if we summation means that we scan through possible values of this variable k. So k equals one, k equals blah blah blah, k equals n, k equals bigger than n. And depending on the match between these values, our delta function is zero, zero, one, zero, right? But if you make summation of a long string where all terms are zeros and only one is one, what will be the answer? Right. Yes. So it is how uh, snake is right. Now, here is some some uh, appropriate word. Delta. If we have not just delta, but delta multiplied by some uh, progression, some discrete function, what is the answer? So same same ideology. Summation means it is a row of many terms. K equals one, K less than N, K equals N, blah, blah, blah. And each term is something a left over from delta function, which is zero, zero, one, zero, and actual discrete function. C one, C N minus one, C N, C N plus one. But the factor is equals one only in front or after one of these terms. All the rest are multiplied by zero and eliminated. So the summation and delta pick one term in progression. Okay. Now how do we deal with it? What do we what do we have? So on the left, we had phi, n, star, psi, initial condition according to London, dx equals summation of c sub k delta n k. Due to orthogonality. So with your new knowledge in uh, math and progressions, how we can simplify this uh, notation? It is equal to C sub k. But we can read it in the different direction. C sub k equals integral of initial wave functions times one of the eigenfunctions and integrate over the whole space. From minus infinity to plus infinity. So, hurrah, <laughs> we got the answer. We, we, we know how to carefully treat the past. We know how to find weights. We know how to find expansion coefficients that contribute to solution. In fact, by now, we do have the third way to predict future. 
So for any function of the past, we multiply it by each of the available eigenstates, integrate, and record the answer. And this set of such coefficients for each of the eigenfunctions should, should be n. Because k was removed due to during summation. So we do have a set of this set of t sub n, right? Very good. So convolution of eigenfunction with initial condition. If if you want to sound smart, you can replace the word integration by word convolution. Uh, and that equals two expansion coefficients. Here it is. Well, I can, I can scroll it back and re rewrite it if you like my calligraphy. But uh, I'll probably do it because you better write it in, in your notebooks uh, to help uh, a little exercise of mem memorization. So wave function at time t is summation of the expansion coefficients wave eigenstates, eigenfunction, times accumulation of phase, where the expansion coefficients are found as convolution of the initial wave function, x comma zero, oh, here is t, here is zero, times phi sub k dx. This is prescription. This is <coughs> protocol, lab procedure, lab. manual, how to predict future. No, it, it, it works. You will see that it works. We just do not look on specific problems to save time. Otherwise, it would be too, uh, too long for our already short uh, meetings. So, summary. First way. Psi of x t equals psi of uh, x zero times the evolution of period. Second one, psi of x t plus delta t equals one minus i h bar h delta t times psi x t, right? Second way, numerical. Depends on delta t. For delta t equals zero, there is no change. In the third way, I'm just lazy to type because I just, just did it. So three ways to go from past to the future. Past, future, evolution operator. Past, future, infinitesimal evolution operator. For numerical model. And the best of the best. Method based on <coughs> solution of eigen states of time independent trading equation allows them to be used as building blocks to find time depending solution. So, the summation of eigen states with phase accumulation and with expansion coefficient that are found as convolution with initial condition. So, this is past, this is future. Any questions? If no, let's finish the meeting. Looking forward to see you on Wednesday, same place, same time.